Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 5 a.m. on Saturday in London, and 3 p.m. on Saturday in Queensland, Australia. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. And tonight we're profiling Wubo Ockles or Ockles? One of the two. We'll be back in 8.3 seconds. Thank you. Uh, thank you to a member of the audience for suggesting we learn more about Wubo Johannes Ockles. Um, he's the first Dutch astronaut to travel in space. We actually found out that there are four people from the Netherlands. You want to share the screen? Sure. Actually. Who have traveled off world. And three were called, oh, sorry. Uh, three, three were called astronauts. And, and the fourth was not because he wasn't a professional. Rather, he's a tourist. And Wikipedia makes this distinction on their website. Also, um, Wubo was the first Dutch ast astronaut to travel off-world, yet he was the second Dutch-born astronaut to go. The first Dutch, Dutch <coughs> astronaut to fly was a naturalized U.S. citizen when he went to space. This um, load, uh, this <laughs> Vandenberg, so, um, Lodwick. Yeah, we're we're gonna have trouble because it's Dutch and. They're just unusual names. We don't really know how to say them. So just go ahead and look at that. But it is kind of weird that this first Dutch-born person who was a naturalized citizen by then wasn't the first Dutch citizen to fly. So we thought that was interesting. And there are a couple more names here, too. Yeah. Um, Andre Kuiper. Kuipers? <laughs> don't know. Kuipers. Um, and... Um, he was the second, um, he was the third Dutch born astronaut and second Dutch citizen to fly in space. And Oliver Damon, who we actually talked about, yeah. um, in 2021 when he went up on Blue Origin, right? So, uh, as for Wubo, we learn more about him over on the wiki page that's actually devoted to him, and you can get there from that site uh some highlights about him uh and i'm just gonna go with the first paragraph there because it's it's a great setup for this uh Wilbur johannes ockles born 28th march 1946 died 18 may 2014 was a dutch physicist and astronaut with the european space agency who in 1985 became the first dutch citizen in space when he flew on the STS-61 as a payload specialist. He later became professor of aerospace engineering at Delft University of Technology. And just some highlights. He actually had PhDs in physics and mathematics. Um, and he flew on shuttle on the shuttle flight STS-61A in October and November in 1985 for the European Space Agency um, as a space, space load, payload specialist on Space Lab One, um, which also had the distinction we found out of being the first mission run from someplace other than the US. Right. Um, the, it was run out of Ger Germany for the ESA. Yes. Um, they spent a week in space, 110 orbits, although he does say 112 at one point, um, but um, Wiki shows 110, so 110 yeah, we saw 100, 110 more times. Than yeah, yeah, 112. So. Um, with the largest team on the shuttle, eight people, including Bonnie Dunbar. So uh, next up, we've got the mission patch, and it's quite beautiful. Although this team of eight, that was a lot to fit into one patch. The, yeah, they actually added an extra half right, right here. <laughs> yeah, and if you can read Dutch. Here's the site that's devoted to him. We do encourage you to check out all these and learn more about him as well for yourself. Now, we didn't really understand the Dutch part, so. Um, yeah, and, and, I, and it's got a bit of web rot. Yes, yeah, but but I think this was part of his, um, 
happy energy thing too. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Yep. And we found another interesting page about Wubo here. Um, it's um, Google Arts and Culture. And it talks about him, the first Dutchman in space. And it's a little overly produced, um, but there's a lot of really interesting pictures on it. So it's worth a look just for those. And they have captions for the pictures and it's a lot of scrolling and you just have to, you know. Um, I really like the information in there too. I didn't really see some of it in other places. Yeah. So that was useful. And, and a lot of these things may be similar, but there will be pieces of it that, you know, you will get that are a little different and you can put together a, a much more, <coughs> a whole picture with, you know, reading a bunch of different sites like this. And of course the pictures are really great. Mm -hmm. I think you got a little bit more of it. So I, I just scroll through them all. <laughs> okay. These are really cool as Buford. Yep. And uh, was he one of the admins? I don't know. I thought he was. Yeah. Oh, and he was something of an inventor too. It says there on that one, it wasn't his first invention. This, the sleeping arrangement. Yeah. Oh, Hey Cliff. Thanks for joining us. We have not seen the comet yet. I did sort of look in that direction the other day, but I didn't see it. Yeah, and the one, go back the, a little bit because that's the the site that he was working in, right? Yeah, that's. Um, yeah, this is Delft University of Technology. Right, he became a full time professor of aerospace for sustainable engineering and technology. Yeah. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff. And so. and so that's it. And they kind of zoom in on pictures of him, you know, his part in the picture. Yep. Uh, we found out that in 2020, a Google Doodle was created for his 74th birthday. Yeah, hey, oh, hey Anthony. Anthony. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I know people can get busy. And of course, there's always the replay. Yep. There's some really good biographical information in there, too. I really like that. Oh, good to be. Yeah, we, we appreciate you coming back very much. Yeah. So yeah, very cool Google stuff. Apparently, its reach was <laughs> mostly in the Netherlands. <laughs> Which makes sense. But, you know, we didn't even know at the time, but we found out that there was one created mm -hmm. uh, for his 74th birthday. I don't know why they picked 74 instead of, like, 75. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, you got another. Yeah, there you go. Oh, the European Space Agency has a page about Wubo, too. Um, it looks a little funny until you click on the picture. Yeah, Yeah. so there's there's the picture of him until... Yeah. Oh, and that's... Oh, you blew it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. There's the picture, but you don't get much of the text. No. So you have to X out of the picture <laughs> to get the text. May, so maybe in of... Europe they, they present a little differently in you know, website. Yeah, it's because the, the screens are use A4. Ah, right. <laughs> Funny. So uh, Britannica, and I think that's, you know, the, um, the what we've known, what we knew for a long time as um, encyclopedias, they have some similar information. But again, I really like to look at different sites to get more of a, a whole picture of um, the person we're, we're looking at. Then there's an interesting, and I think this is the one. Is this the one? Yeah, go to the next. Yeah, yeah. So here is the Happy Energy Foundation. And he and a couple other folks actually founded this. And they were uh, talking about, you know, sustainability. And he was heavily influenced by his trip. And you've, you've probably heard the term overview effect. A lot of times the astronauts will go into space and they're, and they will come back with a, a very different, you know, feeling of having seen the whole earth without the boundaries that we kind of arbitrarily choose for countries. Of course, there's water versus land and different things, mountains and so forth. Um, but yeah, they created this to talk about um, the, the idea of sustainability. Go ahead and scroll down a little bit on there. Cause it's a, yeah, it's pretty interesting to, to browse around and I love, I love this in English. So <laughs> we can actually read this one. Mm -hmm. There's quite a few, um, 
yeah, quite a few um, pages in there yeah. about and mission and stuff. And we encourage you to go and take a look at these things for yourself. And we will be putting all of these um, links in the comments. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There, I have a bunch of them. So, yeah. Yeah. And um, we have the, he did this final video before he died. It's very emotional. But, very. And it appeals to the, to be good stewards of the earth. And I encourage you to watch this. I won't run it here. It's like five minutes long. It's a bit long for here. Yeah, a bit long. Um, but it's very good. He does speak in English. So, you know, um, so that's good. We've saw, seen a number of videos from him, but a lot of them are, are in Dutch because, of course, he was speaking right to a Dutch audience. Yeah, there's some pretty cool things that he got involved with. Go back to the last one because I think they have the super buzz there. Yeah, the upper upper left corner in the picture there in the upper left corner. Yeah. Right there. Mm -hmm. Kind of circle around it. Um, yeah. Just, just fast with your, yeah, right there. That is a very cool, uh, kind of limousine like bus. Oh, Hey Don, welcome. Couldn't find the comment from the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it has to be a pretty dark site. Mm -hmm. And, um, he, he did a Ted talk also. Um, and it was, a lot about sustainability about you know right but also this ted talk was about time being an illusion yes and very interesting it's very interesting to listen to i don't agree with it but it's very interesting to listen to and it's so, really long it's like 20 minutes long yeah 22 minutes long so we're definitely not showing it here I get a little bit more interesting picture than just the <laughs> And and it's kind of interesting too because he says his name several times, which gives us a chance to understand how it's pronounced. So, yep. oops, we got on to the wrong one now. Oh, you must have forwarded it. Yeah, yeah go back. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So. And at this there. point, he's he's pretty up there. So. Yeah. He looks a little different than his astronaut pictures. Yeah, and we we were wondering how to pronounce his first name. I don't think we ever he ever spoke his. Last name, Maybe but, once or twice, but most of the time it was woo boo, and he would, he would like talk to talk about himself in the third person. <laughs> yes, yes, he was, did a lot of third funny. person. Kind of um, also, um, speaking of his name, I was thinking that that doesn't sound like a very Dutch name, but apparently other people thought the same thing, <laughs> yeah. and um, and I saw a discussion here. Um, oh, he was also a character. Wubo was a character in um, For All Mankind, which is a Apple um, TV series ah. about what would have happened if the Russians beat us to the moon. And the fact that the space race was still going in the 80s. Um, so it was an alternate history kind of science yeah. fiction show. Yeah, and he was actually... Yeah. Wubo was a character... <laughs> on the moon base you know, tells you that it's alternate history right there yeah. but in a discussion for that show someone says can you explain the name wubo is it short for something or a nickname perhaps it doesn't sound like any dutch name i've heard before and the answer to that is it is an exceedingly rare name it but it's not short for anything no one could consider it to be a regional dialectical name for the far northeast of the Netherlands. About six people are given the name per year, and almost all of them from the province of Groningen. Groningen. Um, so that's, that's the origin of his name. Most languages in general, you can pretty much pronounce them how they're written. It's very, they're very phonetical. Dutch is one of those languages that's a little bit odd. We do have one more. Oh, do we? Oh, yeah, yes. The, is it? Is yeah. It? Okay. So hang on. Let me get back to it. And here we go. Yeah. And we have his obituary on Yahoo News. Um, he died at 68 of cancer in 2014. Right. And um, they, again, a lot of information in here some of which 
we used for our show, but there's more that we didn't use. So, um, so he was basically an astronaut and a professor. Yeah. And uh, all about sustainability after his yeah. overview effect experience. Yeah. One of the things is that the seven day shuttle mission with the space lab, which was basically a space station in the back of the shuttle, mm. um, 75 experiments. That's a lot. Oh, and they covered a lot of turf too biological. So, um, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Behavior of fluids, materials, biological samples, samples and the human body and microgravity. So that's a lot to so cram they, into a week. Yeah, they, they, it was eight people. They were really crammed, cramped together and they were really <laughs> busy. Yeah. Yeah. But, Cause normally it's like six or seven on the shuttle. That must've been really, really tight, really busy. Yeah. And I think this was actually before space station. So we definitely, yeah. well, they were doing everything in the shuttle and the, and the bay outside. I think that's what the space lab was all about. It was mm. because we didn't have a space station. Mm. Okay. And so um, it was our portable space station that we could put up there and bring back down. So did you have any more for um, no. Wubo? That's, no. Yeah, that's the no. difference. I, I did not. So uh, I wanted to leave you with one final thought from him and his wife we found on that happy energy site, uh, act like an astronaut of spaceship earth. Earth is our only planet. We have only one. There is no spare. So take care. All righty. Oh, Hey Scott, welcome. Yeah, I wonder hey. if cancer rates are higher in astronauts compared to the normal population. That's a very good question. And I can totally believe it will be, especially if we get beyond earth's influence. I think yeah. there are some protections still in orbit, right? Right. Well, he, because they're under the Van Allen belts. Yeah. But also, um, they have shown higher cancer rates in airline pilots. Oh, I didn't know that. Not huge, but there is a higher. It oh. is it is measurable. Okay. And that's because there's a lot less atmosphere protecting them than, you know, than most of us who spend our time on the ground. Yeah, it's going to be a so, big, big engineering problem to solve. And yeah. Yeah, anybody out there want to talk about that? <laughs> Let us know. So, uh, yeah, I would like to, uh, once again, say that you can come and get a meteor shower chart at meteorshowerchart.com. Fill in the form, press the button, and get your chart today. No charge. Yep. Let's see what's next. Nope, not that one. Okay. You're uh, up. <laughs> some stellar events this week, February 3rd through February 10th. Not many. Not many. <laughs> nope. February 5th. A full snow moon, which <laughs> if you got snow, Don, I think you're the only one here who has snow. Yeah. Um, February 10th, Mercury and Pluto are in conjunction, of which you'll see Mercury. <laughs> yes. Because Pluto is a little bit small and a little bit far away. Mm -hmm. Or a lot small and a lot far away. Also, oh, hey, Cliff. Um, oh, okay. Oh. No difference. Interesting. I would love to see that study. Yeah. That would be very interesting to read. Maybe it's just because they're not up there for very long. Mm. And some of them have been, I mean, a year or more. Yeah. Some That's... of them have been. So, but of course they're still alive and they, you know, and one or two does not make a good um, statistical sample. So, right. Yeah. Um, Thanks yeah. though, Cliff. Yeah. Yeah, once we have a sustained colony up there. Oh, we'll you know, learn a lot more. We'll learn a lot more. <laughs> learn yeah. a lot. Also, February 10th, our Friday night show, we have a guest. Yeah, you can find us Fridays at 9 p.m. Pacific time on the Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. So some other events and activities. I actually found a couple new things. So uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll share. Uh, I found out about this from... Brooke Edwards, she was a guest recently. She sent me a message and talked about STEM enhancement in earth sciences or CEs. This um, is important if you want to, you know, apply to any kind of uh, con contest like this, be sure to read everything very carefully and follow every instruction to the letter. The easiest way to get booted out of a contest is to miss something in the description. This is open to current high school sophomores or juniors who have not worked as a C's intern 
on site previously must be a U.S. citizen. And they um, actually... Uh, do, do they give chocolates as a prize? <laughs> Funny. <laughs> for, for those of you not in the U.S., C's candy is... Uh, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Um, so let's see. They, the next page over there is um, kind of the chart. And these are going to happen soon. February 20th is the application due date. So if you or someone you know would like to enter into this contest to be an intern, go now. Take yeah, a look at this right it's away. It's like two and a half weeks left. Yeah, we're very, very soon. And then there's another page to actually um, uh, apply online mm -hmm. to, to, be, to get a um, profile. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is a summer high school intern program. Go now. Ends February 20th. Oh, login page. That's what it is. Uh, then there's a Google Doodle contest. Speaking of Google Doodles, <laughs> they actually have something for kids like kindergarten through 12th grade. And this is for U.S. and its territories. The due date for this one is March the 7th. There's another page up there. It's the entry form, mm -hmm. how, to, how to enter, um, especially if you want to enter by mail, I think is the, there's another one up there about. Yeah, see the, the address at the bottom? Mm -hmm. I thought there was another page for this one. You no? didn't have one okay. for me. All right. Again, follow all directions exactly to the letter. One more thing I want to talk about. There's a Next Generation Suborbital Researchers Conference, NSRC 2023. This is produced by the SWRI, which sounds with, stands for <laughs> Southwest Research Institute. This will be at the Omni Interlochen Hotel in Broomfield, Colorado, February 27th through March 1st. And I'm going to take a break to look at some comments. Uh, the astronauts on the station go to a special area when there are solar flares. Yes, I have heard about that too. And Cliff comes in with, it was recent as the study was involving twins, the guy that was longest mm -hmm. up in the space station and his twin brother. Yes, right. I remember that. That's just been a, a few years, right? Yeah. And of course, that's a sample size of one, essentially. So it doesn't really tell us much except that he didn't get cancer. Sir, yeah. or didn't get cancer yet. I mean, I think that's the did trouble. Notice with some some differences between the two, and yeah, and twins are a pretty good way to understand a little bit more about yeah that kind of thing. There were some biological changes that they did notice, right? And I think it was was he a little bit taller too? Yeah, but course, only for you know, a while. Oh, okay, so it was just yeah, then he temporary. was compressed down, but um, and I think he essentially had more aging. Um, symptoms. Okay. Is that a brother. telomeres thing or something else? I think it was more along the lines of bone damage from micrograv from being so oh. long in microgravity. Okay. You know, that sort of thing. And just, oh, yeah, it does a number on your the way, the calcium in your bones. It, and, it out. and the calcium in your blood doesn't do good things for you either. Mm, okay. Um, and I think a whole bunch of other things where the organs just didn't work yeah, our organs aren't really meant for zero G, you know, that's, we're not built for that. Um, yeah. Cause we, we were, we evolved on right. but a it, one G planet. So. Yeah. But so we can learn some stuff from that, but a sample size of one isn't, you know, if you've got someone who's genetically not disposed to cancer, it's kind of hard to tell what causes cancer mm. in them. You know, that's, that's why lab rats can get uh, are bred to get cancer easily. So they overestimate what causes cancer. They, mm. they cause cancer in a lab rat by skin cancer in a lab rat by taping a dime to its back. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which wild. tells you how, you know, yeah. how chicken little some of those studies are. Well, um, uh, oh, we keep losing sound. Oh, sorry about that. I, yeah, I didn't notice here. I, I can can't. keep hearing her. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's anything we can do on our end. Of course, you can come back and... And watch the replay. That's probably going to be pristine. I don't know if it's a yeah. It depends on national connection it, thing. Yeah, or something else. Yeah, it might be going Sorry. to Australia, or it might be going from us to the server. Oh, and Scott says. Oh, well, Scott's very close to us. He's in Acton, California. So. Yeah, so it looks Sounds like it's good. it's that stupid line going from us to Australia because we we've had troubles with that in the past. Oh, and Don comes in with, I think they looked at a larger group than in the twin study and found little difference. The eye problem that the 
that develops is very serious. Ah, yeah. Okay, I don't know much about that, so definitely uh, share if you uh, if you would like to. Yeah. And yeah. So. You know, so some things are, are an issue, some things aren't, and there's a lot to learn there. Oh, yeah. And one of the main things is going to be how do we protect ourselves going on long trips like to Mars and farther. I mean, mm -hmm. that that's there's a lot of problems, <laughs> lots of engineering problems to solve. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the best way is to pack stuff around it and spin the heck out of it. So that you don't have bone loss as much. Oh, but, for kind of artificial gravity. Yeah. So-called, yeah. Yeah, even if it's, um, well, the really bad idea is to have two sections of the spaceship and spool them away from each other on a on a cable tether and then spin them around the common center. I just think twang would be a really <laughs> bad sound there. Um, so. Really bad sound most anywhere. <laughs> so I don't think that that's really viable for a long journey, but Hey, um, yeah. you know, but anything sufficiently, you know, wide enough can be spun to get decent. I mean, heck the carnival rides, mm. you know, pin you to the, um, back end. It's yeah, um, some of those aren't very aren't big very, diameter, but they go pretty fast. Right. right? You would want a much bigger than that. Which means that we would not be able to launch it from the Earth. Got to build it out there. Cool. Yeah, you have to build it out there. See? But you know, you you build a the donut. The rockets aren't very big. Yeah, you build a donut. Yeah, you, you shoot it off in the right direction, and you start spinning it, and there you go. Yeah, I think they wanted to do something in the space station, the International Space Station, like that. But I think they came up, came up with some pretty good problems. So more engineering yeah. problems. Yay! Well, the <laughs> the thing is, you want the whole thing to spin. Mm. If you have part that doesn't spin, the spinning part will, because of friction, will eventually have the non-spinning part spin. Oh. Or, or will slow down to the non-spinning part. One of the mm. two. Some okay. combination of the two. Mm. Also. I thought there was a balance thing. Well, there's that um, because it's not like the, the space station was built with, you know, with rebar and, you know, I-beams. It's built with you know, pencil thin um, structural yeah. members and and plating, but um, artificial yeah. gravity would help a lot to alleviate bad effects. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about the eyes though. Is it something with the... I think that was... Well, there's two possible effects and I don't know which one Don's referring to. Mm. Either like glaucoma caused by cosmic radiation zipping through the eyes or it could Which just will still be, remain the same whether you have artificial right. gravity or not. Or it could be overpressure because mm. in zero G, their faces would bloat because right. all of the gravity that pulls liquids to your feet right. isn't there. Yeah, it's just uh, sort of more evenly distributed. Right. Yeah. So, um, so it could be just an overpressure in the mm. eye. Mm -hmm. But again, one G would would affect <laughs> that, and coating the surface of it with with enough mass would would help with the um the cosmic radiation the cosmic radiation yeah. Yeah. yeah so so do we have any other things to share i, I thought no, that was it but that, okay that was it yeah that's what i thought okay yeah <laughs> we're I, mostly organized and usually just wanted to say that um i'd heard of that for all mankind show oh yeah uh -huh. and just seeing what i saw looking up um you know stuff on wubo makes me want to see it even more yeah totally um too bad it's on um, Fruit Phone Channel. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, well. Yeah, it'll be out there eventually. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So if you have any more comments, quick, because I think we're about time. It's about time to wrap things up. Thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate that. Cliff and Scott and Dawn and Anthony. Yeah. You make a difference for our show. Otherwise, it'd be just us sitting here talking. <laughs> Thanks so much. You yeah. want to you want to take us out? Oh yeah! If you or someone you know has done something interesting involving space exploration, science, or astronomy, we'd love to share our live. Oh, Don did come back with something. It does have to do with absence of gravity. Our eyes are fluid after. Yeah, so okay. it's overpressure. All right. Yes. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's kind of like having glaucoma. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, yeah. No good. <laughs>
Join us again next Friday, February 10th. Derek Wallentinson returns. He'll share his adventures to Chile to see Gemini South, Vera Rubin, Alma, and other observatories. Sounds amazing. So come and hear us, hear directly from Derek next Friday. Thanks so much, everyone. Glad you could be with us. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Yep.